you know, when we had our body and soil conference, this gentleman got in touch with Irene and said, hey, um, I'm, I'm doing a new line of pies, tarot pies, and uh, he calls it pono pies. And, uh, and he wanted to do it, and he, and he stepped up and did it for the conference. He said, no, I'm just going to make it for people. I want, I want them to have it. And this is the kind of leader that he is. Really appreciate who he is. I, I had a, a, we had a guy set, set up from Kamapali, one of our members, who's a chef and a farmer, is supposed to give Chef's Corner tonight, but then couldn't get off from work, couldn't get somebody to cover for him. So we pinch hit with John Cadman. I mean, no matter whenever, John Cadman and Justin Pardo, whenever I ask them, even it's last minute, hey, can you guys do a Chef Corner? Susan Teton, the same way, boom, they just jump right in. So, uh, um, so I asked John, and he said, sure, I'd love to. So please, give a warm welcome to John Cavett. Yes, John Cavett. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, thank you, Vincent. Oh, by the way, Vincent, Napoleon Cove, he wants his costume back. <laughs> um, actually, I didn't, I didn't, he called me on Sunday night, and I really wasn't sure what I was going to do. And so, I resorted to good old faithful Hulu, my favorite food in the whole world. Hulu, breadfruit, as it's known in Western culture, um, is truly the most amazing food crop in the world. And I know we can't just chip along with just breadfruit, but it really is. It's probably the, the, the best solution to cure world hunger. Um, and it's just an amazing crop, and it's lost its rightful place in our culture that it once had. And so, about six months ago, Vincent asked me to do a talk on Hulu, and, and you know what, it truly changed my life. Because I researched it, and I, I, I realized that it's like the poster child for sustainability and food security. No other food epitomizes food security more than breadfruit because it's so prolific. It's like having taro high rise. You know, if you told a farmer in Iowa, hey, I got a corn plant that'll keep growing, give you five, one plant will give you 500 pounds a year. You don't have to replant it. It keeps getting bigger and it'll live longer than you. And the best yet, once the tree gets old, it self propagates and you can make a surfboard out of the tree. <laughs> that is the coolest. So, and, and you know what, it truly did change my life. A heartless, selfless plug here. Um, I, I've been doing like raw, healthy desserts, you know, um, dairy, wheat, sugar, gluten-free, all, all that stuff that is, we don't like, our bodies don't like. And I had an ingredient epiphany one day out in Hana coming up the road from Wainapa Napa. There was a little breadfruit laying there. And I can get all the breadfruit I want from Kahana Gardens because I'm working with the Breadfruit Institute now after because after I gave that talk I went out and went grand prize at the breadfruit cook off at the Aloha Festival. And, but that one little breadfruit, I saw it on Friday night going into the campground and I didn't pick it up. It was sitting there on the ground. And I I I, I, oh, I should have got it. The next morning when I went surfing the Koki, it was still there and I picked it up and for some reason it made me realize, like, you know what? Because I, I, the base for my pies is cashews. And I thought, you know, cashews, you can't really get them here. I thought, what if I use breadfruit? So now I'm incorporating breadfruit in the pies, and I think they're awesome. So if anybody was at Body Soil or at the, uh, the, Ag, Fair. the Ag Fair, and also um, Cola Alea, we had a point of pies. And this one I'm going to do this weekend at the uh, Birthday, thank you. I, I do this this one. It's I call it Rocky Road, and it is amazing. I use raw cacao, raw uh, cacao nibs. I use actually real marshmallow extract, which is from bark, and I make this like swirl chocolate pie. It's outrageous. And then I'm gonna do a lily koi also. Tonight's demo. I, I had breadfruit dropped off from Ian from Connor Gardens today. So tonight's demo, I'm going to show you what to do with right breadfruit because that's one thing most people are used to cooking breadfruit as a starch and that's another reason why it's one of the most amazing foods in the world is because as it ripens it gets sweet and so he basically brought me breadfruit that was pretty mushy in fact usually what people would do is we throw that away but that's exactly how I like it so what I do is I just put it on a cutting board 
cut it in half, and it's it basically is falling apart. But it's super sweet because the starch goes to sugar. And then what I do is I just steam it for like 15, 20 minutes. Better to steam than to boil because when you boil it, it absorbs too much uh, water, so it gets soggy. So basically, I end up with pieces like this. And the cool thing about breadfruit, it doesn't fall apart. Like it's you know you could steam it for at least 15, 20 minutes, but it doesn't get any softer. In fact, it actually firms up a little bit. So I take it out, let it cool, and just kind of strip some of the when it's when it's hard. I'll usually peel it before I cook with it, but not when you're going to make um, something out of dessert because it's too hard to peel when it's soft, right? And this particular variety is a Samoan variety that, if you notice, it's real yellow when it ripens. So it has a few seeds in it, but the texture is awesome. But you could do this with any kind of red fruit because what they all get sweeter as you as, as they ripen. So essentially, what I'm going to do here is put this in the blender, and I'm going to make a uh, pudding, blue lily white pudding, and make sure all the seeds are out. And I, and so that's all the food I'm going to test. I'm going to take these off. So, breadfruit, mostly, 60%, okay? I'm going to put a teeny bit of salt in, just a pinch. Salt brings out the flavor and a lot of stuff, just a teeny bit. And... I'm going to sweeten this with honey. You can use, I use usually raw organic agave, but this is local wildflower honey. I'm going to use that. And we got some local lemon juice here. And right now, so as you can see, your measurement's pretty, pretty precise there. <laughs> um, anti lily koi's passion fruit syrup. It's not really lily koi season right now. The, if anybody has the vines, the, the flowers are set right now. And if anybody will have a source of lily koi, I would love to buy them from you because I can, you can juice them through a champion and then freeze them, so I need lots of lily koi juice. But um, this is kind of a concentrate, so we'll do about like that. And uh, so, I'm a, I, and I brought samples too. I made some this afternoon. I only have about 70, so if you're here with a partner, maybe if you could share it, but maybe they could bring those out right now um, and pass those out. And those trays, by the way, are the coolest trays you've ever seen in your life. So I'm not leaving here without them. Um, they're like total 60s trays from Camel yeah. So if I, oh, and then the liquid, a lot of liquids you could use. Um, this is organic soy milk. You can use almond milk, rice milk. You could use dairy milk. I, I kind of prefer to stick, avoid dairy. Um, and if I were to blend it right now, it would be good. Oh, a little vanilla. But... Who knows what the best natural yellow food coloring is? <laughs> That's an easy one, yeah. So, which I wouldn't add if I was going to make, now you could adjust this to do a lot of flavors, like you could totally do chocolate with this, it would be really good. So you'd add raw cacao, maybe some cinnamon, cardamom, nutmeg maybe, but, so I wouldn't add turmeric with that. But then you just blend it and... And because it's so starchy, it will start to get thicker as you as you blend it more. And then you notice there might be a couple little brown specks in this pudding, and that's because I probably missed a seed. But the seeds are totally edible. And if you didn't, if you don't get some, I'll take this in back and scoop some out for you. It's not cold though. That's the only thing. And of course, turmeric is outrageous for you. Everybody knows that one, right? And you know, what got me going in on desserts is because I have a raging sweet tooth. A raging sweet tooth. And I was really gaining weight because I was eating too much sugar. So I, a lot of my desserts right now, the Pono Pies have uh, coconut oil in them, lecithin to thicken them. And, and people, I love it, people like mainstream, like the typical standard American dieter, the sad dieter, will try it and just go, wow, this is so good. Anybody had that pie this weekend? Yeah. Pretty good, yeah? And, and you're not missing anything, right? You're not missing out. So, I love breadfruit. Thank you for letting me share. And this is it. Like I said, you could add, instead of lily koi, just a little cocoa powder. Delicious. Cool, yeah?
Okay. Yeah, and so, um, questions? Okay. Anybody? Right, so you just take it from here and chill it? Yes, right from here, I'll just scoop it out into a bowl and then chill it, yep. And, and this, is, like I said, I use this base for just about any kind of pie. I'm gonna go home and make one I have a meeting tomorrow night, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a chocolate peanut butter banana. No, chocolate almond banana. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's a great question. It's technically not raw because I do, oh, the, the, the difference between like ripe, is this technically a raw dessert? And I would say no, because I do steam the breadfruit. You can eat raw breadfruit, um, but it does have a slight raw taste to it. I don't mind it. Some people, you know, it's a little sharp for them. So I steam it, yes. Cool it, skin it, and then put it in there. Can you plant the seeds? I would say no, but that's a good guess because I would imagine there's seed variability. But but the fruit is true to the form with the suckers, and I don't know what you call that, but they send out suckers, you know, and so that you can just pull those off and, and get them. And right now, the Breadfruit Institute, who I work with, is is truly working to go around the world to, to plant breadfruit trees in countries where hunger is an issue. And they're working on uh, getting... Yeah, it's awesome. And they're working on getting um, different varieties of breadfruit propagated and spread everywhere. So I'll keep you guys posted on availability of breadfruit trees. Because you know what? After my talk, I, so many people have said, I planted a breadfruit tree because you thank you so much. I saw Patrick in Mono Foods with three breadfruit. I, I felt like crying, man. I was like, wow, that is so cool, you know? I see Vincent in there. I have a breadfruit, yeah? Right on, man. Okay, I know we're pressed for time. Thank you guys very much.